I like to get up, have tea, sit my ass on the couch, put on my TENS machine and read a book for a good two hours before I fucking start work in the morning. Hey everyone, this is Cass Contents. I wanted to tell you how I stay unbothered through the work week and all the time, really. I think the first thing that I do that has made the biggest difference in my life is knowing that I can say no to things. I've noticed, I don't know if this is a new thing, this is like our social media world, but it seems like people have a lot of trouble saying no to things. They just let everything come in at them and then they are really frustrated and irritable and sometimes miserable and it doesn't only help you to say no when you need to say no it also helps you say yes when you need to say yes because you have the reserves the resources inside of you to say yes when you need to but when you say no you also are interacting like an adult with people and people know that they can trust you and you are being of service to them and if they are people that think that they can trample you think that you are at their their mercy at all times anytime they want something for you from you that will show up if you say no to them. So it's good to know where you stand with with people when it comes to boundaries. If people that can't handle you saying no are in your life anyway, and you can't get away from that, then at least you can know that you need to emotionally distance yourself from them and, and physically distance yourself from them as much as possible so as not to 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 drain you and to be very firm with them when you say no to them and then in my experience people who really really push it's been my experience that if you are very firm with them in your no and then kind of step back from them they know that you're not someone that they want to deal with. They want to push the people that they can push. And as sad as it is, they want to take advantage more and more and more of the people that they know they can take advantage of. It can be human nature. We can all kind of push people a bit more than we should maybe sometimes, but people who are really, I won't use the word, really a certain way and really push people past their boundaries and know that they can will continue to use those people to push and so you have to protect yourself and maybe stand up for those other people depending on, on whatever the circumstance is. The second thing that has helped me so much, so much in the last few years that I mentioned at the beginning of the video is getting up earlier in the morning. I'm lucky with my shift, I work, I work a nine to five. You know, a lot of people, they work earlier shifts. These days, people work different shifts. A lot of people I know, they start at 7 a.m., they start at 8 a.m. Maybe they have a longer commute time. But me, I have a 9 to 5, and I, and I don't have a long commute time. So even starting at 9 to 5, I get up just after 5 in the morning. And actually, no, that's a lie. So for the summer, I work... No, I still work nine to five, but it's, but I end earlier, but yeah, so I get up at 5.30 in the summer and 6.30 during the, the year, the school, school calendar. And those some days when it's pitch black and I look at the clock and it says that it's time to get up, it says it's 5.30, you just, I can't believe it, it's sad. I get up and I feel so much better going into work having had some time once you get over that whole hump of struggling to get up in the morning if you're pushing yourself to get a good sleep at night and i'll get into that but um if you get over that hump you do get used to getting up 
earlier in the morning or you get more used to it as I say like maybe on Mondays it's a struggle <sighs> maybe on Fridays it's a struggle because you're tired but for the most part I get used to it and I fall asleep more naturally at night now and at a decent time and then having that hour or two in the morning to have tea in the quiet and and um, read a book on my Kindle, obviously, because it's pitch black, and um, make my lunch at a leisurely pace and have my collagen drink for my breakfast. It lets me go into work feeling like I have something for me. You know, I'm not just this chicken with my head cut off, up running around like the Tasmanian devil, trying to get in for work, you know, everything being about work. It's like, no, I'm taking a step back. I'm giving myself some time. I'm doing something that I enjoy, reading books, having my tea, which I love, having some quiet, having some darkness. And then I open the window because the AC is on. So I turn it off and open the window and just watch the sun come up. And it, it, allows me it might allow you to just enjoy your day or have your day at work be more tolerable because you have that time for yourself some people get up and clean that's not something that I'm ever going to do in a million years first thing in the morning but some people get up and clean and that is really helpful to them going to work having a clean place and not having to do that later it makes sense to me theoretically but yeah not something I'm ever going to do, but it's an idea. So those are the two things that have really helped me worry less about the chaos that, you know, is my life right now and has been for a long time. If I can tell the people in my life, no, when I need to and say yes to the things that really require my attention. I was watching the Netflix CEO or the first Netflix CEO. I don't think he is the, the CEO anymore, but he was talking about, he made Tuesday nights with his wife date nights and he said he was going to do it and he stuck to that. And he said, so at five, five thirty PM, he left work. No matter what was going on, he told people, you have to cover it. I'm leaving work. And he said, lo and behold, crisis, crises, crises didn't, they stopped occurring at five o'clock. You know, it's, it's, it's initially when you, you start something that's uncomfortable, it seems like everybody is getting at you and everyone's fighting back. Maybe they're used to you always saying yes. But then when you get over that uncomfortable hump, then it gets easier and people know that that's just what's going to occur and things are taken care of. But you have to speak it out loud, at least to yourself, make it real, make it solid. The next thing that I said I would get back to that helps me stay unbothered in life is sleeping properly, which I swear has taken me my entire life to learn. And only two years ago do I feel like I absolutely got it right. The one thing that I decided for myself to sleep better was to have a job that didn't stress me out mentally. Like my job can be very stressful. It, it really requires a lot from myself, from the people that I work with. It's, it's a serious job, but it's not a job that requires all this mental planning, stressful, cognitive work per se so it's not something unless you let it some people let it but for me it doesn't keep me up at night it doesn't keep me thinking as the the the, the hours get later into the evening oh what do I have to do tomorrow what do I have to you know I set myself up during the week maybe I I give myself 15 more minutes in the morning before I start 15 more minutes after to kind of get myself organized and 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 go so it makes things more it makes things flow better during the week so I'm not kept up at night for work because I've had jobs like that I've had jobs where I was kept up at night because of worry and then I had the shits in the morning before I went because I was nerves I was a wreck people that I worked with 
didn't respect each other at all. It was just, it was terrible. And I'm not living like that. I don't think it's, it's, it's worth it living like that. I think that there are ways around living like that. So that was the first thing was addressing the type of job that I was doing. The second thing, these are random things that have helped so much is having extra weighted blankets on me. They're not weighted blankets. They're not special. They're just two more blankets on me that are wool, that are heavy, that help my anxiety calm down. They press upon me. They, they help my muscles relax. And so I can sleep better with those. So that helped so much up to a point. But then a few years ago, we had noisy neighbors that would not stop. We were banging on the ceiling. They would not stop. So I finally had to break down and get earplugs, which I did not want to do. Best thing ever. Oh, if you want to know um, the, no, I'll just, I'll put it in the, the comments anyway, the brand, because they're also such a, a lovely company. They sent me a handwritten note as a thank you for buying from them so now I always buy from them even if the prices fluctuate and oh my goodness gracious me <laughs> what a fucking game changer the earplugs are like they just they kind of almost create this natural white noise by shutting things out and it can just sleep sleep all the way through most nights shuts down you know by shutting out the external noise helps shut down the brain noise that so many of us struggle with with anxiety so i'll just leave you with those three for today those three things i think really help you and then of course there's diet which i mean you've heard me talk about that enough and i'll talk about that another day again but thank you so much for watching everyone this is oh my legs this is cast contents i'd love it if before you go you give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you like being here and i would love to let you i would love you to let me know how you feel about this stuff in the comments because that's my favorite thing about the videos is talking to you guys so thank you so much. I will see you in the next video. Bye.